Hello, I am Damilari and you're welcome to Badagri. So today I'm going to be visiting the um, Brazilian Barakum Slave Museum and the Point of No Return. So this documentary is loaded with full history of how Africans were enslaved. So watch this video to the end. You need to watch it to the end. Bye. Okay, so you are welcome. Um, my name is Cornerstone. What's the name? My name is Damilare. Damilare. Now, if I'm to trace your route with that name, you are a Yoruba man. Yes. Am I right? Yes. But with my name, Cornerstone, you cannot tell me where I really come from because that name is not our name. As an African, all African tribes have their native name that once you mention the name, Somebody can locate you. Somebody can tell you that you are from some part of Africa through your name. That will tell you how powerful our name is. But it was so sad that we Africans, we don't like giving our children our native name. We prefer giving them Christian, Islamic, or English name. I'm not saying anything wrong with those names that we really gave them, but we have a name that's so unique that somebody can trace you. Quickly, when you say you are Damilare, you know, I know that you are Yoruba. Okay. Now, I don't know if you know the people that be a coffee. Have you ever done a coffee? Yeah. Do you know the two from where? From Ghana. Ghana or Togo. You see now, that's to tell how powerful our name is. But slaves have no name. Slaves bear their master's name. It's like you buy a dog and give your dog a name. Now, the slave trade began by the Arabs in the 7th century. Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco, Libya that you see today, we are owned by the blacks. We call them the Kush, the Nubian, the Kamite. But today, if you get to Egypt, you realize it was the Arab that ruled. What happened to the Aborigin? Those Kush, Nubia that live there. The jihadists, the massacre, the key majority of the blacks along that Aziz, and they left Islam. And up to date, when you get to Egypt, you see that the white Arabs that ruling, the first pharaoh menace and co, the massacre them. Then it's the trade lasted for 17th century. Now, in the 14th to 15th century, the Portuguese came up with the transatlantic slave trade, which began in the 15th by the man called Prince Henry, the navigator. But later, the English joined the trade. The name of the first slave ship, being named by Jesus of Lube, or Good Ship Jesus, owned by King Henry VIII of England. But later, Queen Elizabeth I rented it out to John Hawking, one of the slave facilitators, and they still taking Africa away. As a slave, and they too came through the water, they gave us the Bible. Now, uh, and I used to tell people that we Africans, there's nothing wrong with our own uh, religion or our own way of life. You understand? But somebody will tell you that the reason why you are not making it because of our name has something to do with our idol that we worship. Well, I don't know, but really, do you know how many Christians Islam? Muslim have killed, and do you know how many Muslim Christian are so well killed because of that religion that we I, I, let me use the word borrow here yeah, because we borrow it's not our own way of life. Now, this is the cenotaph of the man that owned the compound. If you get to I turn around by Tiwa, you see his statue standing at the number. Back. He founded it in the year 1902 for the replacement of a battle victim of war then. When he was at the age of six, he was captured at Jogorile by Dahomey slave raiders. The public of Dahomey was changed to Benin probably 1975. Maybe he had a Kotonu at Yashef, one is called the public of Dahomey. Now, the young man had a name. If Father Melekun was the name given to him by his parents, but today, how come the name changed to Seriki Williams Abbas? Abbas was the first master that owns him as a black man who lived in Dahomey. He made him domestic slavery. Later, be sold into a white man called William. William took him down to Brazil. He taught him how to read and write. But later freed him. It was the William who built this compound for in the 1840s. In 1895, he became the Seriki Muslim of Badagi. Because slaves used to be at their master's name, that's why he chose to be at the name of the first master, the second, and the title that he had. His birth name 
the father and Melekun disappear because they have no name. They bear their master's name. Now, majority of the slaves taken for this compound we are taken to Brazil. That's why we call the compound Brazilian Baracon because all slaves taken from Africa we are taken to different parts of the world. Some are taken to Mississippi, South Carolina, Virginia, Brazil, and Quebec. The compound, the one taken for this compound, we are Yorubas origin. And today, if you get to Brazil, you see the traces of the Yorubas there in Brazil because there's a god among the Yorubas they call Eshu. Over there, they call it Ezu. They use X in you know, the Ezu. X, Ezu. Oshu, Ozu, Yalakara, Akraja, Yemeja, Lemeja. You can see the similarity. That said that the Yorubas are be taken away from this compound to Brazil through this entrance, this slave port that you are seeing 16th to 18th century. There used to be entrance here then. Now, Barakun is a Portuguese word. It was coined for the word Barak, meaning cell, dungeon where the slaves are being kept or being stored. And we have 40 rooms in the compound today. 40 slaves must be in each of the rooms. But out of the 40 rooms, the federal government of Nigeria met with his family that were presently living in the compound today, that they should take two cells. They now kept most of the relics that people all over the world comes around here to view. But before we go in, right on the wall, these were some of the European products that were used in a chain for the slaves when they arrived. Because when they came to Africa, we have our own kind of money that we spend. Now, let me mention four types of money we spend in Africa in the, in the olden days. In the olden days, tobacco were used as money in Africa. They sort of called Yala salt. I think Yala is a one local government in Cross River called Yala. They use salt as a form of money in those days. They sort of call Manila. Then cowrie share we are used. But European said they do want to do business with our forefather with those kind of money that they would have preferred doing trade by. Butter and trade by butter simply means a chain good for good. European will give them a ceramic bowl, they collect 10 human beings as a slave. That era. Now we see have five or such all in the play that we'll show you later. Mirror and bead. You can say two slaves, I can say three slaves. We call it bargain power. It depends how you can bargain and negotiate with European for beads and mirror. The Bradis was given to the man that owned the compound when they want to turban him by the Brazilian as a gift. Why the kettle was given to him by the Europeans that were doing the trade together. A bottle of whiskey go for 10 human beings as a slave. We have a bottle of 873 from Vienna, Austria, inside the museum that we'll show you guys later. The European give you one bottle of whiskey, you get 10 human beings as a slave. One umbrella go for 40 human beings as a slave that time. Could you believe we still have the surviving umbrella up to the Even though two years ago, the umbrella brought the vice president of Nigeria to this company, Yemi Oshibagyo. I'll be showing you the picture when the vice president came. To see the umbrella for 40 human beings. This one I call cannon gun. Cannon gun, then we are used to fall to us. The longer one go for 100, the shorter one go for 40. The European give you a ding gun, you give them 40 human beings as a slave. Now, my brother, the question is this We Africans or black men, what do we do with the guns and the cannon? We use it to fight each other. So to have more slaves to set the river, we sold ourselves into slavery. And it's still happening up till then. Now, the two entrance door. Have been here since the 1840s when the compound was being established. It's one of our monuments that people come here to view. Now, look at that well over there. The well was dug in 1847 by the slaves. But though the family that lives here today use this water to clean, do some out car or washing and other things, but it's not drinkable because it changes color three times a day. But because simply because they were slaves, this is where they drink water from either dirty or not. They believe that slaves are no body. Now, let's see, out of the 40 rooms in the compound, let's see the two rooms, one of the rooms, the government said the family should set aside and see what we have in those rooms. Now, this is the first room. We call this one covering yoke. They use this to yoke two slaves together. They put this at the ankle of the first slave, then the ankle of the second slave. Look at this pin holder, they put their padlock. And this thing was made of metal. It will always put wounds around their ankles. Who cares? Because they were slaves in Nazi. They see me wearing on their legs. This one is called waist chain. Any slave that is stubborn, they will try to run the waist. So because of the heaviness, it will calm the slave down so that it will be less aggressive fighting others. That's why the guy in the middle is a stubborn slave. Now, this is the, the vice president of Nigeria, Yemi Oshibadi. This very umbrella that one of our crew was showing him, this is surviving umbrella for 40 human beings. The umbrella, European will give our father this, they collect 40 
Nandi. And the question is this. How could they exchange 40 enslaved Africa with this ordinary umbrella that were made of wood, bronze, silk, and cane? Let me show you the cane. Look at the cane. And this umbrella was so heavy, and as heavy as it is, just a guy costly have to carry it on the head of the master. Because of the heaviness, it must not drop from the hand of the slave. If it drops from the hand of the slave, the penalty could be there. They'll be headed in instantly because slaves were somebody's property and they believe they can do anything to their property. The same umbrella, a slave boy was kind of the head of the master here. Now, uh, this is the same, this is Seriki Abbas. You can see him with the Brazilian. This is a picture of him negotiating with the Brazilian. Maybe probably they want to buy slave from him. So they were negotiating with him. And this is him. This is his picture here. I told that he had education through the second master William. We made a photocopy of his own writing here. When he sold a piece of land to some cost, I read the same pound in the year 12 to 19 Now, we call this thing iron muzzle. They use iron muzzle to cover the mouth of the slave because slaves were fed and drink water once in. This is another one. You can see this. This is another iron muzzle. They used to cover the mouth of the slave. But if they don't use this thing iron muzzle to cover their mouth, they used to pour free. They will pierce the upper lips and lower lips with red hot iron. They will not apply padlock so that they will not be able to eat or communicate with each other. Now, this item number seven, we call it iron drilling bit, which they used to write the name of the owner of the slave on the, at the back or at the check. We call it branding because slave kept here were owned by a different owner. For identification, you have to brand your slave right on the checks or at the back. Now, secondly, there's some slaves. We call them runaway slaves or they call them fugitives. Any slave that run today, you run tomorrow, the master will say, bring the slave. You know, the iron has some kind of, you can see the edge of the, you can see the pin. So they put this in between the big toes. You know, our, leg, our legs used to have a toe, big yeah. toe. So in between the toes of the legs, here, they put the iron on the blade. They will drill it and once it's done, they force it to open or they use a machete, they chop off mm. one of the toes of the slave so that the slave will not be able to escape again. But if you have watched the thing called The Rude by Alex Ali, Kunta Kinte was the guy African name. They want to give him Toby. The guy said, no, I'm not Toby. My name is Kunta Kinte. I am from Africa. He started describing where he come from. It was the seventh generation of Halesali traced their route for United States of America to Senegambia, where the guy was captured as a slave. That's why when people come here, tell them, please, let's give our children our native name. There's nothing wrong with our name. Now, uh, this chain here, and the one at your back were used to kill the slave. Later, when we enter the second cell, I'm telling you how they do the lynching of the slave with those two chains. Now, this one standing here, there's what they call chariot or car, T A R T. That's in horse normally pull. This is the back way owned by this man called Seriki But Now, my brother, where we are here right now is called inspection room. Inspection. This is where they will inspect them. Any slave above 40, 45, 6, they call them macrons. They don't want such a slave. They want a young chap because their aims and objectives, they were going to work with the table. So they want a very early slave. So this is where we inspect it now. We are going in there. We are the KF 40 room. We call that room dark room. So while coming in, you have to bend your head. Yeah. Okay. Let me put this on. Yeah. yeah. So you're welcome. Now look at that rectangular shape of window. Up there, imagine that small window will give ventilation to 40 enslaved Africa that will be here for three to four months. This is where the DPKP do a lot of things. Imagine the odor, the heat. Imagine how many of them will have died inside this compound. That's the main reason when people come here, I tell them you guys are not here to catch one, but just to feel the pain, the people, the past that fell. And each of these ceramic bowl holding the plate go for 10, 10 slaves. It doesn't matter the size. Once the can give you one of these, you give it 10 human beings. This is a 50 human being you are seeing in here. And some of the gig given to me by the Europeans and Brazilian friends, and some of the money we spend in Africa. If you look at the body of that bottle, you see 1873 bit customized on the body of the bottle. The bottle from Vienna, Austria. That's a 10 human being. That run object, we call it record. Today we use DVD and CD. And these are some of the, because the man that owned the coin was a Muslim. If you want to do his prayer, this is where they store his water for ablution, or if you want to take his bed soup and the drinking pet. Now, we are going out to see the second cell. So please, while coming out, wash your head, sir. So, you're welcome. Uh, a lot of people, when we first opened this door, they thought this thing is a mummy. No. 
we're just it's just a local mannequin mannequin or a dummy and what we're doing we're just showcasing this cloth on this local mannequin the cloth is over 200 years of age it was given to the man that owns the company by brazilian friend now to the point of no return we shall be telling you more about later when we go out this is the movement to the point of no return they moved in in a single file after crossing the lagoon over there they will now walk on that route so at light in, at the interval of the journey there's a well dubbed by the african sheep they call it slave attenuation well or memory loss well they used to give them the water to drink when they consume the water we are told that they will lose their memory but it's not for life for three to four more by then they will have sent them that to europe now the question a lot of people ask about the well who do the well why must they do the well now we call the slave ship a cargo ship a cargo ship could take like 600 four two one it depends the size of the slave ship so the crew that were taking hundreds of slaves away they are no more than 25 to 30 people so anytime the slave spotted the lamb it's aggravating they kill all the crew on board they will not kill the sailor why because they cannot study the compass they will not add the sailor to sail to any available i think that's what happened in Guadalupe, haiti those caribbean now the african ships now came on what can they do so that they will be less aggressive that's why they do the well across and once they give them the water to drink, it will calm them down for three to four more. By then, they will have sailed them down to Europe. From there, they will regain their memory. Back. But ironically, some say the water is still effective. Some say it's not effective, that the power is not there. But we don't know how truth is it because we've not seen anybody say, okay, let me take this water and see if I'm going to lose my memory or not. Then after giving them the water, they will march them straight down to the point of no return where you see Act of the park shore where they'll pass on that where they'll say bye bye to Africa. But today, Lagos government have built a monument in conjunction with the Act of the Park Shore. We call it Door of Return. That when tourists go in, you come back to Africa. That is to say, no more slavery again. Now, let's look at this picture. This picture tells a lot of story. That man, this man is a chief, and those two guys they are ready that they want to capture the man as a slave. The man took knife and killed himself. Why the question I used to have is why must this man kill himself? That to tell you that this man knows the implication to be a slave. Say, instead of me to be a slave, we we'll prefer to die. Now, most of the Igbo slave taken along Calabar and Bonnetport through on the two them to Georgia. There is an island in Georgia called St. Simon in the Dover Creek, where over 75 of the Igbo slaves said they can never be a slave in their normal land. What they do. They kill their masters. 75 of them walk into the ocean. They drown themselves. They call the place Igbo landing up today. Now, when I read their story, those Igbo slaves were singing in Igbo, Igbo language that the Golden River should take their bag home. Now, to me, the letter end up in Georgia water. That to tell that their spirit is here crying for vengeance. And I used to tell people that before Africa could be back from where she buried off track, until we learn to say sorry to some certain set of people, probably the problem we're facing today will be less because we have everything. Why are we still sovereign in the midst of it? It's, it's a taboo and it's against the will of God to sell your own brother into slavery because we sold ourselves into slavery. Now, there's a thing called Django Chain. Any fugitive, any runaway slave, try to escape, they will release some dogs. We call them killer's dog after them. And the dog will eat the slave to the bone. We call them killers, dog. Now, slaves bear their masters then. Any slave that refuse to be struck to death. And if a slave die, no case. Because they are somebody's property. Yorubas call this cloth as sure too. This cloth is over 200 years as well. And with this regalia, the cloth belong to Siriki Abbas. And for someone to own this, then show how well this man was. Then to have this kind of as sure too. Then, and this box, Yoruba call it in those days and we didn't know how many slaves that were used in a chain for this look at these bricks today this compound have been defaced by the family of city about that lives here. originally the compound were not being plastered you'll be seeing all these bricks as we call them bronze bricks that they used that time and then the ceiling is not a bamboo if it's a bamboo slave we are not full they will like, escape through the roofing they use a clay like three feet thick like as we when you did a decking Let's see the second sir. Now, look at this iron corrugated sheet that they use for the roofing there. Here the sun. 
you can see that it's different from what we produce now. What we use now, you get 20 of it from this edible zinc that they use for the roofing. Then now, up to date, we see some of this zinc on top of the roofing. And these are some of the children of Seriki Williams Abbas. And this chair used to be his realization chair. For someone to own this then, show how well he was. Well, this is another sad moment here. Now, we call this thing GALO, G-A-W-L-O-W. If they want to kill the slave, if you remember when we were in the first cell, I introduced a chain on the, over the wall and they want to show glass. They will tie around the wrist of the man, the hand will be tied at the back, the woman, two hands up, be suspended, and the hand then on gallo. They will be here dying gradually, and they normally mount the gallo in the plantation. So why other slaves busy working, they will be seeing their brother and sister dying They are trying to instill in that to create fear into other slaves. As you see them, they will last for a day before they will die. Now, August 23rd was being set aside by UNESCO as the day of the remembrance of slave trade and its abolition based on what happened in Haiti around 1791. Now, look at this picture. This is when the slave base, the slave in Haiti, they base, they killed all the whites in Haiti. They started putting ropes on their neck the way they used to hunt them and they later got their independence. But after many years, after getting their independence, the French that were, were the ones that enslaved them they came back to them that they should pay damages we call that thing reparation for killing their people and the idea said they got the money they say borrow from us later you pay back and which they did and as i'm talking haiti is one of the poorest uh country in the world because they are still paying to french colony and to me as a rasa man it's like a slap how could somebody invaded my land we didn't invite them they took me away as slave and we are still paying them reparation. Now, I don't know. Uh, most of the colony, the French colonial today, because I've never traveled to Haiti before, I don't know how true this is, but most of the colony, the French colonial, colonized in Africa, like Benin, Togo, and Co, or uh, Africa, they are still paying colonial taxes up to date to the French colony. And to me, I don't know why. Now, there's some groups. We call them abolitionists. That's why when people come here, I tell them, to me, I have no hatred to any color. Either you're a white man or you're a black man. Because among the white, we have good and bad people. And among the black, we also have good and nice, bad, nice people as well. Now, there's a man called John Brown. John Brown was hung on Gallo this way to death by the American government. Because what he does, he goes into the plantation, set the slave free, give them weapon, they go to another plantation, they kill plantation owner. He was sentenced to death by the American government on gallows till death. Some say with two of his sons, I don't know how true it is that because I've never come across that. But they say they kill him, they call him nigger lover. We have the uh, Willa Weber for Bukati. Buka Many of them like that, they started revolting people like Hadek Tobma, Kumbi of Brazil. Many of them like that. So, but the British have no choice. They just have to sign treaty. When they sign the treaty, the slavery will be they put stop to the trade. And when they put stop to the trade, the slaves here, we are jubilating for freedom. And there's nothing so beautiful to be a free person or a free man. Look at that small window. We have to give another 40 in slave Africa that will be here in this room, nine by nine inside. Now, let's see the last place in the compound. Over here used to be Siriki Abbas Court. We are used to pass judgment among the committee other hand. That chamber serves as the service. This is a section of the compound. All this room that the family of Siriki Abba live today, they are all slaves. So come over. You know, I told you that this compound will be in the face. Originally, you'll be seeing some brick. I want to show you some brick. Okay, look at these bricks here. Look at this. Can you see those red bricks? Can you see those bricks? Yeah, originally, you'll be seeing those bricks outside them. So all these bricks, those are called bond bricks that they use. Now, the compound today, you can see all this room, they are all cell. Now, this is the remnant, the building where Sri Kiaba lived used to be here. The building collapsed in 1995, to be in 1847. The building, so it's a story building. I didn't mean that this building is still standing, probably it will be the second story building in Nigeria. We call this thing mausoleum. This is where Sri Kiaba was buried when he died. He died 11 June 1919, and he was buried by the family, the Muslim community, and the Brazilian, and this is the tomb of one of his sons. His name is Saka Ajawilen Sabas. He was born 1913, 
1987. So you are welcome. I don't know if you have any questions. You are free to do so. Okay. So um, let me just ask one question. Okay. So all the slaves were taken out of Africa. Yeah. Did they return back to Africa or they perish there? Now, only few of them will return because during the transatlantic slave trade, uh, the movement is known as Middle Passage. Taking African away as a slave to America is not a Middle Passage. The majority of them found themselves at the bottom of this uh, Atlantic, Atlantic, like the Atlantic, you understand? Because it, it, sometimes they used to revolt, and sometimes the boats, storm will come, the boats will just capsize, everybody buried. Sometimes some of the slave master will, they will treat some of the slaves upboard into the water for them to drown. Or if they storm on the water, if the boats want to capsize, for the balancing of the slave ship, they will have to draw some slaves alive for the balancing of the slave ship. It's not all of them, but when it's getting closer to the... It, because the slavery started in the 15th century. So when it's getting closer to 18th century, late 18th century, some of them return. We call them returning. You know, which you see them in Lagos, Island, some part of Bekuta, Benin, Togo, Ghana. Some of them really return. Only a few of them return, but the majority of them died under water. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Love you guys. See you next time.